Well, welcome all to this time of worship, whether you are joining us on Zoom or if you're one of our online worshipers that is catching us at a later time on YouTube or from our website. We are so glad to have you join us as we hear God's word for us on this day and as we sing God's praises today. We will be sharing in Holy Communion today, so please have bread and wine or juice available so that we can gather around God's table to receive the life and joy of Christ into our own hearts and bodies and lives. And today we are also welcoming four families in, as new members here at Lutheran Church of Peace, you will get to meet them a little later. Uh, they are going to get to do something that we don't usually do on New Member Sunday, but they're going to take a moment just to say hi and introduce themselves so that you can see who they are, since we can't drag them up front in front of all of you today, this morning. But we're very excited uh, to have these folks joining us as brothers and sisters in the family of faith today. Just a reminder to join us for one last evening on Wednesday night. Uh, we'll turn the Zoom on at 6 o'clock to enjoy supper together with whatever you are having. That's been super fun and silly. And, and then we'll move into Holden Evening Prayer and hear from one last monologue that will set us up as we move into the holiest week of the year. Now... May wherever you are located today, your kitchen counter, your living room, your coffee table, take a few breaths and allow that space to become filled with God's holy presence, to be a sanctuary where you can receive and hear God's word for you on this day as we hear and begin our worship with our opening prayer from intern Amy. Please pray with me. Almighty and loving Lord, with steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. We honor your name for teaching us to love, showing us the way of acceptance, forgiveness, and peace. We are quick to judge and slow to accept those whom we consider lower than ourselves. Breathe upon us the power of your spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all through our days. For the sake of the one who is the essence of love itself, Jesus Christ, our loving Lord. Amen. Please join in in singing our Kyrie. During the season of Lent, we are called to return to the Lord with all of our heart. Let us take a moment now to confess our sin and our faith before God and before one another. Merciful God, you sent your son Jesus to save the lost. We confess that we are often lost. We stray from you and turn aside from your way. We fail in love, neglect justice, and ignore your truth. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us and create in us clean hearts that seek you with all of our strength. Reclaim us and shape us into people who love and serve as you do. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. 
Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now let's sing the hymn together, Will You Come and Follow Me? For today comes from Luke chapter 18, verse 35. As he approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard a crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Then he shouted, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who were in front sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and ordered the man to be brought to him, and when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he gained his sight, he regained his sight and followed him, glorifying God and all the people when they saw it, and all the people when they saw it praised God. He entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, today, salvation has come to this house because he soon, today, Salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek out and to save the lost. Here ends the lesson. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to children's time. I don't know about many of you, but I also have had the problem that Zacchaeus had where I've been at a parade or a sporting event or movie theater 
and there's people in front of me that are too tall for me to see around. I also have the problem where I can't always reach everything in my kitchen because the cupboards are too high. So my grandfather, uh, who loved working with wood, made the women in his life, um, who are all uh, a little shorter in stature, uh, stools so that we could reach. So he made one for my grandma, for all of his daughters, and for all of his granddaughters. I think the reason he did that was, one, he knew we were short and might need that, but he also knew that we could do things even though we were short in stature without needing help. So there are many people uh, in many different walks of lives that are short. So I want to talk about some of them today. I think last year I brought up Muggsy Bokes. Muggsy was my height of 5'3", and he played professional basketball player, or professional basketball. So he played against people as tall as Dan McIntyre, who is 6'7". It would be a lot more impressive if we were in church and Dan and I could be standing next to each other and you could see our height difference. But that's uh, the difference that Muggsy had to face against when he was playing basketball. Many of you know Simone Biles. She's an Olympic gymnast and combined she has won more than 30 Olympic and World Championship medals. She is only 4'8". For those of you that are a little older like me, you might remember Mary Lou Retton. I believe she was the first woman, a U.S. woman to win all around gold at the Olympics and she is 4'9". Laura Ingalls Wilder, who wrote the Little House on the Prairie series, was only 4'11". Mother Teresa, who helped sick and dying children in India, was only five feet tall. And Andrew Carnegie, a good businessman who donated money to many libraries, was only five feet tall. Short people have been outstanding astronauts, scientists, musicians, artists, and athletes, just to name a few. Let's pray. Dear God, no matter what our size, no matter if we are children or adults, we have an opportunity to welcome Jesus into our lives. We all have that same opportunity to receive your love and use your love to accomplish great things to help others. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that shout out to shortness today, Danielle. I love it. As we start this morning, will you take a moment and pray with me? Let's pray. Holy God, thank you that you love all people, great and small. We are all your children. Open our hearts today to hear this word that is for all who were present in these stories and for all who are present here today. Speak through me right now, Lord. Speak into hearts and lives. Transform us and shape us that we might be vessels of your glory for all to see. In your son's name, amen. So this morning as we get started, I want you to try something with me. I want you to take your hands, put them out in front of you. Go ahead. And then make two circles with your fingers. And then put them together. Right? You see where this is going? We're going to make a telescope. Right? Now you're a pirate. Everybody can be a pirate. So put those together, hold them up to one eye, close the other eye, and then just focus in on some spot in the room where you are sitting. Just one, just one spot, okay? All right, now I want you to think about, you, you have something in your sights? Don't move around, just one spot. And I want you to, out loud, we're not gonna unmute, but just say out loud to yourself or to whoever's with you all the things that you can see as you hold your telescope up to your eye. What do you see through that telescope? I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to name off whatever it is you see. I see the exit sign at the back of the sanctuary and there's a vent above that. I don't know that I ever really looked at the vent before. And I see that the cross is missing from the table because I know it's out in the gathering space. And I see the fuse boxes and the back corner of the pews and the cement, all the things that we see through that. You can see a lot, can't you? You could put your hands down for a second now. Maybe you saw, right, the cobweb 
in the corner of the room that you hadn't really noticed before, or maybe that picture that of the family that you pass by every day has all your loved ones in it. Or maybe you notice the way the light shines gently or brightly on a particular spot on the wall in the room in which you are sitting. Well, now I want you to put your telescope back up one more time. And I want you to look through it, look at the same spot, look at it real closely. Now, instead of naming what you see through the holes in your hands, I want you to name what you aren't seeing in the room. No peeking, no peeking. See how many things you can name, how many details about the rest of the room you can name without looking. Again, I'll give you just a few seconds to sort through what, what can you see without looking. Well, I know the baptismal font is to my right and the altar is behind me. And the pews are in front of me. Now when you're done, I want you to put your hands down and I want you to look around the room that you are sitting in. And I want to notice all the things that you missed. All the things that you didn't see, couldn't see, while you were focused in just one direction. And I want us to consider today that these stories in Luke, the one about Zacchaeus in particular, have suffered from telescope vision. I want us to consider that these stories today, especially Zacchaeus's, has suffered from telescope vision. I don't know about you, but I have been singing the song about Zacchaeus since I was a little girl. I kind of thought maybe Danielle would have us sing it today, but she didn't, so I'm going to have you Sing it with me right now. Don't worry, you can stay muted, but sing along with me, and I, I can see if you're singing. So, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see, right? And when the Savior passed that way, he looked up in that tree and he said, what did he say? Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today, for I'm going to your house today. If you didn't know that song before, you're welcome. It will now be your earworm for the rest of the afternoon. But we all know, right, we have known since we were little that this story is about Zacchaeus, the tax collector, who wanted so badly to see who Jesus was that he climbed up in a big tree so that he could get over the crowd. And that as Jesus strode by, he looked up in that tree and he said, Zacchaeus, I, I must come to your house today, which was a big deal, a huge deal, unheard of in fact, right? That any respectable Jewish man, especially one who sought to be a religious leader, would step foot in, much less share a meal with, receive hospitality from a tax collector, a known, named, labeled sinner. See, tax collectors were notorious cheats, and they were in bed with the enemy. Rome used locals to collect the taxes that kept the empire flush. And every month, the tax collectors had a dollar amount that they needed to give to Rome. But anything that they collected above that tax, they got to keep for themselves. And they often kept plenty at the expense of the welfare of their own community. And as chief tax collector. Zacchaeus was persona non grata numero uno. So, of course, Jesus is going to go to Zacchaeus' house because he is here to seek and to save the lost. And the crowd grumbles about Jesus going to a sinner's house. And in response, G Zacchaeus stands up. And, well, this is where it gets a little interesting, isn't it? Does Zacchaeus say, I will give? 
here and now I give, or I have regularly and will continue to give half of my possessions away and return fourfold to anyone, it is found that I have cheated. Well, honestly, the Greek does not support a future tense. I will give. But scholars are inconclusive on whether or not the present tense of these verbs are a now he's going to start giving or he has been and will continue to give even in this present moment half of his possessions away and return fourfold to those it is found he has cheated. And at first, this was super frustrating to me as if the whole way I see this story hinges on this one sentence and how it is interpreted and how we understand it, right? But then I realized, because it really does change how you see everything, doesn't it? But then I realized that that's really the problem, isn't it? The telescope has always been aimed right at Zacchaeus and the transformation that occurs in his life when he encounters Jesus, which is a truly awesome story. But when we zoom in only on Zacchaeus, we miss the full vision that Jesus comes to reclaim. The story we telescope in on centers on Zacchaeus being the bad guy who is reclaimed. And the crowd just gets to be bystanders watching it all happen in awe. But what if, what if Zacchaeus wasn't the bad guy? What if Jesus comes to shower him with God's love and grace because he has been pushed to the edge of society because he's the one who isn't seen or who is only seen in a certain assumptive tainted light? What if Zacchaeus's eyesight is 2020 and it is the grumbling crowd that is blind? When we step back from these two stories and take them in fully, we notice that the only people who seem to see Jesus for who he really is are the blind man and Zacchaeus, right? The crowds, the disciples, the religious leaders, they don't get it. They can't see what or who is right in front of them. But the blind man shouts out, son of David, he's very clear on who Jesus is and what Jesus can do for him. Zacchaeus climbs a tree in order to to see, to just catch a glimpse of this one Jesus. I mean, that's just not something that the chief tax collector in town, the wealthy, are going to do, right? He's risking his reputation as he crawls out on that limb. And yet these two are the ones that see him. What if in reaching out to the blind man and to Zacchaeus, Jesus is actually reclaiming our vision, reclaiming our eyes and the way that we see each other, what we assume about each other, how we interact with and are in relationship with one another and the people around us. I've been listening, as I'm sure you have, and reading and watching the conversation around the shootings in Atlanta this week. And I am not here to argue whether these were hate crimes or not. But I have been wondering what this horrific tragedy says about how we see each other. Our Asian siblings, our female siblings, our siblings who work in certain industries? What have we allowed to seep into our consciousness, our culture about one another through stereotypes that are deeply damaging, positive or negative, right? That have shaped our response, our interactions, colored the lens we see one another through. And how has our silence 
made us complicit in both the microaggressions and the horrific violence that is perpetrated upon our brothers and sisters of all colors who continue to be told to be quiet, keep your head down, it's really okay, it'll go away. What if the stories of the blind man and Zacchaeus are stories of Jesus showing us another way to be in relationship with one another. Another way to be with those we have made assumptions about and those who remain without a voice, those we have pushed to the edge of our society who are unseen in our communities. What if Jesus in these stories is showing us right before he marches into Jerusalem to die for us, what if these stories are showing us one last time the way of love? Jesus' incredible love for the blind man is shown in the way in which Jesus listens to how he describes what he needs. Jesus' scandalous love for Zacchaeus is shown in his willingness to receive hospitality from a kingpin mobster. My colleague Steve Thomason writes about this story that Jesus must stay at Zacchaeus' house so that the people's blinders might be removed and they can finally see him for who he really is, God's child, God's loved, forgiven, reclaimed child. And relationships can be restored and community can be reclaimed and healing and peace can really happen. And that is why Jesus can declare today salvation has come to this house. I want you to make that telescope with your hands one more time. But this time, instead of pointing it at a spot on the wall, I want you to aim it at someone either near you physically or someone you can see in another little Zoom square somewhere on the screen. Might our eyes be brought into focus as we see more clearly and listen more deeply to the stories of brothers and sisters around us. That our hearts might be transformed in the radical, radiating, reclaiming love of God. Amen.
Thank you for that, Nora and Jen. This morning, we have the awesome privilege of welcoming uh, four families into our community of faith here at Lutheran Church of Peace. We know this well, that we are not a building, but we are the gathered family of God. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, given this new identity through our baptism into Jesus' death and resurrection. And today, we welcome you, Tom and Barbara Clark, Jim and Linda Dockendorf, Terry and Julie Woodman, and Ethan and Amanda Nagel. We welcome you as members of this family in the larger body of Christ. And so we ask, and you can like maybe just give me a thumbs up on this at this point, but today we ask, do you desire to join the membership of Lutheran Church of Peace? If so, thumbs up. One, two, three, four. Woohoo! Oh, Dan McIntyre, too. Thank you. Thank you all. That's good. Lots of you want to join today. That's awesome. So uh, this is the part that we don't usually do during uh, new members, but we would love to have you just take a moment as I call on you to just share who you are and... I don't know. What, what do you want to share about yourselves? Maybe how long you've been in the Maplewood community, um, who makes up your household, including pets. We always want to know about pets. What we really want to know is, are you dog people or cat people? Because this is important. So uh, Julie and Terry Woodman, I see you first on my screen. So would you unmute yourselves and then share with us? So we're... Julie and Terry Woodman, we've lived in this community for almost our whole lives. Um, it's just us in our household. We have two grown children and two, we're both married and two wonderful grandchildren. We're definitely dog people, but we don't have one right now. Just grand dogs. <laughs> <laughs> That's us. Thank you. Grand, grand dogs, dogs are a good way to have dogs. They are. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's, let's see, see. Uh, Ethan, Ethan and Amanda, Amanda. would you, you share, share with us? Hi everybody, we're Ethan and Amanda. Um, we are new to the neighborhood, moving yeah. in about a year ago. And You're good. I think we're good now? Yep. <laughs> we moved to the neighborhood about a year ago in February, and there's two for now. And one on the way. Oh, we can't. There's sound. We can't hear them, but there's some kind of sound happening. Oh, I just okay, hear them I laugh. I can hear you now. Sorry about that. Oh. It's <laughs> hard to get good, good help around here. So. <laughs> Ethan and Amanda. <laughs> Hi. I'm not sure how much I've heard or how much I've said. We're we're newer to the neighborhood. We've been here for about a year or so. There's two of us right now with a third on the way. We're due in April, yep. April 27th. And we have a cat and a dog. Yep. So we're, we're oh boy. both, both yep. camps. You love, love all. Yep. <laughs> That's good. That's, That's good. good. Well, well thank, thank you. We're so, so excited to be able to welcome your new little one at the end of the month as well. well Yay! We love babies around, around here, here, and there are many, many little ones that your little one will have to play with. Um, hopefully someday, right in the front pew, we pulled out the front pew so that they can, you know, terrorize the front of the worship space. So it's always super fun to see them crawling all over the place when you get to that stage when you get to that stage. So um, well, welcome. And we're so glad you guys are here. I know that for you, you guys, you know, were able to come and worship with us in person like twice maybe. Um, and then we lost you and now you're back. And we're so glad that you have found us. So yay. Uh, let's see. Who else do I see? Jim and Linda, Dockendorf. You're on here somewhere. Would you unmute yourselves and share with us a little about you? Yes, hi. So I'm Jim Dockendorf. <laughs> That's <laughs> and Tamara. We say, yeah, we're I'm Linda Woodman. Yeah, I work at people. <laughs> and they want to go so bad. Um, we are empty nesters. We have five children uh, together. And, um, and our children are uh, very happily. And uh, one in Florida, one in North Carolina. And 
the rest in the Twin Cities. We've been uh, in the Oakdale area for many, many, many years. Um, grew up in this area, both of us. And um, <laughs> we just, I just want to mention something about the welcome, the, the welcoming that LCP has done. I, I remember um, the first time we decided to be members and we went to the dinner with Janet and Bob Tron mm -hmm. and met several others from the congregation at that time. And that was such a special night and that really solidified that this was, has been a good decision and it's, and this church is so welcoming that it's, it just continues to solidify our, our feelings. That's awesome. Thank you. And Tom and Barbara Clark. Howdy. There um, you are. My wife, Barbara, um, she would say that I don't really even know what her name is because I've called her Smiley our, our whole married life. Um, we, we both grew up in the Twin Cities, I and Richfield and she and Ooh. Willerney. Um, we raised four kids in River Falls. Um, after they left, we, uh, we decided there was a warmer, sunnier, less tax, taxing place to live. So we moved to Colorado. Colorado. Um, we moved back a year and a half ago for health reasons. And luckily enough, we, we met Pastor Liz when she was um, providing a, a monthly supply pastor to where we live at Stonecrest. So um, I, I basically was, was blown away with her sermons um, and you know, how she interjects her experiences and, and now how her emphasis is on social awareness and social action. So we're, we're very thankful and, and happy to be at LCP. Thanks. That each of you are here as well. Uh, Clarks and Dockendorfs and Woodmans. So I met with each of them the week just before we closed the church last year. <laughs> So they have been sort of official members on paper for this last year, but we wanted to have this opportunity to welcome all of you in, uh, you know, in this really, this warmer way than just filling out a form, right? That's the, that's the official stuff, but this is the fun part. This is the part where we get to say we're so very happy that each of you have found your way through our doors and want to be part of this loving community of faith and that you have found it to be so just uh, warms my heart as well. So hear this reading from 1 Corinthians 12. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as God wanted them to be. And now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a member of it. As you join Lutheran Church of Peace, I ask our new members, do you commit to joining us in fulfilling our vision of building a brave community that includes the sure and the searching and the skeptical, spills outside the walls of the church and shares the joy of Christ? Will you worship regularly, pray always, and seek to love and serve the Lord alongside your brothers and sisters of faith? If so, please respond with a big thumbs up. <laughs> 
awesome. And members and friends of LCP, do you commit to receive these new members as brothers and sisters in faith? Do you promise to love them, worship and pray for them and work alongside of them to love and serve the Lord? And if so, would you respond with a big thumbs up, hand print, clapping, whatever you want to do, emojis. Awesome. I see lots of thumbs and smiley faces. Then let us pray. Heavenly Father, as you called James and John, Simon and Andrew to fish for people, so you have called us to serve you with our talents and our resources. We thank you for these new members of Lutheran Church of Peace. We thank you that they have found their way through our doors. We thank you that they have experienced love and grace in this community. We thank you for their presence and for the gift that they are. Lord, you have told us that wherever two or more are gathered in your name, there you are with them. And so we know that you are present with us now and always as we gather on Zoom today, as we gather at times in our small church communities, in Bible studies, as we do art and scripture together, as we knit together, as we share our thoughts and our lives together, Lord, you are always in the midst of that at the very center of our life. And we ask that you would Help us to see and feel that presence that even more would come to know you, Lord, through their interactions with each one and with all of us. In your son's mighty name we pray. Amen. And now we get to gather around God's table and we have little elves, Barb and Sherry and Sue, who have brought uh, real communion bread around to our new members today. So I know that they have that and we have it here in the sanctuary as well. Thank you for that gift. So I invite you to take whatever bread you have and to hold it up with me. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, blessed it, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together as we are by the power of the Holy Spirit that can even work across the airwaves, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to share in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ with these words, body of Christ given for you, blood of Christ shed for you.
And now for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward you and in reverent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Go in peace. <laughs>